If you like Wild Radio's productions, then make sure to dig our show to dig.com and check out our website at www.wcradio.com. Seems like everyone knows this from birth, but I don't and I can't find it in the glossary either. What's the thing with a tank? Current fear foolish models with his eye, the Morlock. Ha <laughs> ha! Come to take away your sausages and bathe in the tears of your children. Ah, the thing with the tank. You dwarves never make any sense, blithering, dumbfounded imbeciles that you are. The only use I've found so far for a dwarf is as a footrest. And even then, they wiggle too much despite their ropes and chloroform. <laughs> The thing with a tank, eh? Uh, that probably my butler, James. I sent him out to lever a small defenseless village for my amusement. Perhaps your house might be among them. Ah, yes, here it is. 21 Puny Mortals Avenue. Your home and its content should be blown to pieces with high explosive rounds about... Uh, now. Ask the Merlock. Dear Merlock, I have a question about army rankings. What are players doing to achieve private or corporal or sergeant? Ah, yes, the wonderful world of army rankings. Is it possible to create a duller, more mundane question? I think not, but I have a team of scientists working on it right now. In the meantime, I suppose I'd better answer your question. Rankings are achieved by participating in the ganking system, which rewards senseless slaughter with fat loots. The flip side to this is the honor system, which punishes those who engage in fair fights and honorable play by banning their accounts and reporting them to the authorities. In order to gain private, you must participate in at least one gank. Any kind will do, and uh, bonus points for killing a gnome. And to achieve corporal, you must kill at least one paladin. With a small army of around 25 or so, you should take you no more than a few days, as long as the paladin doesn't have any epics. Uh, Sergeant rank can only be attained by orchestrating a truly masterful ganking plan, involving venturing forth into dangerous areas such as Ashenvale and Stone Talon, with a fully equipped level 60 night elf rogue, and killing lobies who are fighting mobs. You must also master the use of the frayed lols, pwned noob, and own a collection of Baywatch posters. Ha <laughs> ha! Ask the Merlock. Dear Merlock, when I look at the fish people, vile fins, all I see is blinding white light coming from them. Do you know why? Fish people, you sniveling, insignificant peasant, bow to me and my lesser kin, for we have come to make you human slaves in a Merlock nation. Oh! Uh, okay, that was a uh, little disturbing. But nevertheless, you shall all die. Well, not so much die. We need you to be our slaves. So dying wouldn't really do all that much good, would it? I, sh- I suppose we could kill you, then resurrect you as zombie slaves in a Murloc nation. Oh! Who the hell is doing that? <laughs> it's incredibly distracting. Do you know who I am? I will slit your throat and fill it with beans before taking your shoes and throwing them into the septic tank while you're still wearing them. Uh, yes, in answer to your question, the reason you're seeing blinding fish lights is because you've been eating drugs. Stop it right now. <laughs> Ask the Merlock. Yes, questionable. Right. You listen to Blue Please here on Wild WoW Radio as we call it today. Open, please. Oh, yeah. Basically, you send me the topics and the questions, and I'll answer them, and I'll try and fill a show with it. We're doing well so far, 45 minutes in, and we've got plenty more emails to go. So, if you want anything to talk about, send it my way. Oh, yes. Right, here's a quick fire one. Maximus Excommunicate, also known as Agus, which is, quite frankly, a lot easier to pronounce. He's got a great email address as well. Fool of a Took. Fantastic. Anyway. The new troll racial, it was pretty underpowered before. I say that lightly as I still found it fairly useful. Yeah, so did I. I, I quite like the troll racial, especially when grinding solo. And you get hit by a mob critical. Meh, yay, 25% extra casting speed. However, seeing as you also play troll, how do you find the new racial? I have a troll rogue, and for me, the berserking costs 10 energy. For a rogue, that is quite a lot, and now I don't use it. Your opinions as a caster are welcome. Now, for a caster, it costs me 85 mana, which is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Whereas 10 energy is 10% of your energy bar. 85 mana is... It could even be 1% of some casters. More, for me, it's more like... 2.5%. Something like that. I never was any good at maths. I liked English and music. That was more fun. But, yeah. I like it. I really do. 
it's interesting to use it in combination with stuff like dark and demonic runes. I can hammer a dark rune, get some free mana back, and then hammer the berserking button. Interesting feature of the new berserking, if you get healed while berserking is active, it stays casting at the same speed as the start. At least if it doesn't, I certainly haven't noticed the change. So, hammer one of them, you've got damage, buff yourself up with berserking, and rapid fire. Increases your DPS, good for burst damage, good for instances, good for PvP, and... There is no downside other than the mana and energy cost now, so I like it. I'm a big fan of it. I was sceptical, I'll tell you that, but I'm impressed. I really am. Right. Okay. Can I talk about this topic? What topic, Magos? What? Do you think Houses in WoW would be a nice piece of content? I came from Final Fantasy XI and even older, a Mud Realm of Chaos, which both had the possibility of having a house. In my opinion, it would make the world seem more alive. It's plus for our peers. Also, pretty cool to customize and collect furniture to dump in there. If you look at Final Fantasy XI, certain furniture would give you bonuses. Less XP, loss on death, resistance, better crit on certain elements, or have a neat function. Atlas shows full world map. What are your thoughts on that? Interesting one. I've discussed this many, 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 many moons ago. But let's get back to it. Right, the big problem with player housing in WoW would be the simple fact that the world is too small. Really, it is. That's the problem. The world is too small. Now, places like the Barrens, yeah, have a lot of wasted space that you could possibly put a few houses in. But what if every player on the realm, what, five, ten thousand people had a house? Where are you going to put them? Can you upgrade your house? Can you have a cottage, a bungalow, a large skyscraper, a can of beans with a roof? Good question. Where are you going to put them? Now, there's been an answer to this given. Instanced housing. However, I have a serious problem with that. Now, one of the big things that I think would be positive about adding housing to the game would be it would liven the world up a bit. You put at past someone's house. Ooh, they've decorated their house very nice. Or, ooh, that house sucks, blah, blah. If you have instance housing where you just go into an instance and all people's houses are there, well, why bother? It doesn't add anything to the world other than an instance portal. Now, that presents us with a rather large dilemma. If you want housing, where the hell are you going to put it? Would we have to create new areas, enlarge the map? Now, I personally don't have a problem with that. Enlarge the maps, get some free space, and then you can go, hey, right, I'm going to go build my house in the barrens. Let's expand villages. Hey, Fer Feralis, you know, Splinter Tree Post. You can have a house there. Expand the map a little bit. Make the villages actually purposeful. Why are most of these villages here? No one lives in them. They're just lifeless, pointless recharge points. You actually put some houses there, then hey, there you go. Where does everyone live in Ogrimmar? The capital city of the Horde? And there's about three houses in it. Population of about 50. Interesting. Now, my... I can see why people will want houses. It's a great idea. It's having something permanent on the map to call your own. Making your mark on the server. It's a very alluring idea. I would love it. I would love my own house. That would be great. However, it's not going to happen. What might happen... Okay, we don't have space for houses. What about space for guild halls? That the richest, powerful guilds can create a guild hall. And hey, let's just say that there is a amount of gold that has to be paid. So you don't have every little five-man friendly guild making a guild hall and filling up the map. No, you make it reasonable to start having a guild hall so you can, say, start with just one room and then you can expand it. Perhaps you could have guild wars. Hey! See what I did there? I stole another MMO's concept. Guild wars. Where you go and attack other guilds holds their castles, their forts, their guild halls. Perhaps you could gain honor that way. Perhaps you could damage it even, although that would possibly be griefing. What would be wrong with a guild hall? You know, a massive great castle in the middle of the barrens. That's fine. There's plenty of space for that. You know, how many big guilds are there on every server that uh, would be capable of building it? Maybe 30, 40, 50? Is that a bad thing? Do we have enough space for that? Maybe. Maybe we do. Maybe you can just cancel out mob spawning. 
There are a lot of mobs just wandering around for no apparent reason. You build a guild hall there, the mobs are killed off. They can be moved elsewhere. Whatever. It's fine. Learn to play. Yeah, I'm thinking guild halls are the best idea, rather than houses. Player houses will get out of hand, there's not enough space for them. Guild halls? Maybe. Now, housing can work in other games. Why? Because it's too big. No, sorry, it's too small. Other games are too big. WoW is a very small world. You may not have noticed, but to actually fly across a continent, it only takes about 15 minutes. It doesn't take a very long time at all. There is not a lot of wasted space in WoW at this point. Everything seems to have a purpose. Even the random spawns of mobs. Hey, they're quest mobs. That's fine. The continents, the areas, they aren't all that large. I suppose that's what you get farming a nice seamless world. That you only have to load if you happen to be crossing continents. However, that also gives you a problem. If you want player created content like that, you're going to have to have some space. We don't have any space. It's too small. Really. How many times have you... You know, seriously, if you mounted up and started running, can you honestly say that there's an area that you could ride across for a full minute and not encounter something that actually has some relevance to the world? Whether it be quest mobs, or a quest item, a quest location, another town perhaps. How long does it take to ride across the barrens on an epic mount? A couple of minutes. How many free spaces can you see? And bearing in mind that it's a very large area, not all that many. So yeah, I disagree with the idea of guild housing on the basis of simple logistics. You can't fit them into the world. I disagree with instance housing because that defeats the entire point of the exercise. If I, w I want to see player-created content on the map, I don't want to see it inside an instance. I have no interest in going into that instance to see other people's houses. No, this is not home and garden. I just want to see something out there, in the world, making it look like it's alive. Putting something in an instance doesn't do that. That's my opinion on that particular one. Right, another quick fire question. Hunters, why do we use mana? Surely energy or focus would make more sense, logically. Maybe, but then again, effectively, all you are, as a hunter, is a caster whose spells require a reagent, i.e. a bullet, as well as mana. So, effectively, what you're doing there, when you're auto-attacking, you're auto-attacking with a wand. When you use an ability, you're casting a spell. You use a reagent, either an arrow or a bullet, and you use mana. Now, yeah, if you energy or focus, energy. Energy recharges too quickly. You'd have to completely change the way the class works. You know how rogues work. You'd have to completely change the way a hunter works. Focus, just another word for mana, really, isn't it? It doesn't really matter what the actual unit is, whether it's mana, rage, energy, focus, beans. It doesn't matter. The principle remains the same. Whether it should be renamed just for the sake of argument, if you want to, that's fine. But I don't personally see the problem with it. Now, someone asks, can you give shoutouts today? Yeah. You can. Just send them over, themerlock at gmail.com. I am not really looking at my PMs right now. I get far too much every show. I mean, my PM box is filled to bursting point with crap. Really, it is. It's all over. And it always does every time I ask for shout -outs. So send your shout-outs to themerlock at gmail.com. I had a couple of shout-outs out. Shout-out to Element Zero on Storm Rage, who's doing Zulgo up at the moment, about to take down Jacklek. Congratulations get to it. It's difficult, but it's doable, especially if you've only just got on there. Shout out, shout out, shout out. Get your shout outs in. Right. Now, people are always starting to respond to the whole gold farming thing. Julian says this, power leveling and gold buying is cheating in my opinion. Someone who is lazy or does not have the title level of 60 or to grind to money for an epic mount. Being lazy is not cheating. There is a blatant difference. Now, perhaps lazy people cheat. 
But the fact that I'm lazy, for instance, and don't go farm money all the time, which is the reason I don't have an epic mount, doesn't mean I'm cheating. If I were to buy gold for an epic mount, am I cheating? Effectively, yes, because I gain an advantage over people unfairly. However, power level at 60? I don't believe those are cheating at all. Julian says... It's only a good thing that Blizzard has banned those gold selling buying accounts. They are both cheating even though you have to pay real money to get it. No, I disagree. I don't agree they are cheating. I agree they're against the terms of service. I agree they suck, they're morally stupid, and you're supporting an illegal business. That is not cheating, it's actually just breaking the law. The gold itself is the intellectual property of Blizzard. Blizzard says what you can and can't do with it, and you can't sell it. However, when it comes to power leveling, it's not selling gold, it's selling time. If someone buys an account, they are able to transfer it to someone else. They have to do it completely, they won't be able to access. But if your friend leveled the character to 60 and then gave it to you, and said, okay, that's now your account, you're paying for it, it's your account. Is that cheating? Is it the same thing? Of course it's the same thing, it just doesn't involve paying money to a gold selling company. Does that make it any different? The principle remains the same. Morally speaking, it's the same in-game principle, but one is morally wrong and perhaps one morally isn't. Is it justifiable to do that? Interesting discussion, I'm sure we'll get some more replies on that. Feel free to send it in, themorlock at gmail.com. A shout out to Katamari. No, I'm not going to say what he just said there. A shout out to the Muffin Master. That's her nickname. Welcome to the WoW Universe. Oh, Lord. A response to Guild Halls. Uh, Chicago says, I think the Guild Halls would be great, but I think that there should be some definite thinking about it. I don't think they should be instanced, nor should every guild be able to get them. Perhaps only the biggest 15 plus guild should be allowed to have one, but then everyone would join the big ones to be in the guild. Yeah. I don't agree with that. Don't penalize smaller guilds. If a guild can scrape up the cash for a small shack as their Guild Hall, then let them. That's fine. There's not all that many guilds that actually succeed on a server. All you really need to do is to make it difficult to build. Don't make it on size, just make it costly. A five-man guild is not going to be able to gather 20,000 gold required to get a shack in the middle of the barrens. No, they can't do it. So that is a natural barrier to them. Artificial barriers I disagree with. Give everyone the chance if they can get the money together. Anyway, Chicago goes on. So my thinking is the guilds that have no house may put up 100 gold to challenge a guild with a house to a 40-man guild war. The challenged house wins that 100 if they win, and you get the house if you win. You may only challenge once every three months, and no guild may be challenged more than once a week. Interesting idea, possibly. I'm thinking griefing is a little bit of a possibility here, though. What if, say, am I 120-man Blackwing Lair farming guild, all epic up to the max or whatever, says, hey, I don't like this guild, let's grief them. So, they leave the guild, they form another one, they challenge for the house, they win, they take the house, they sell the house. Ah, you've lost a guild hall. No, I disagree with that. I don't believe guilds should be allowed to lose their halls. I believe they should be able to be attacked, maybe damaged. But I think it should be more of an honour system thing. You should be rewarded for attacking it, not penalised if you don't. Penalised if you actually lose it. Not good. And P.S. Can you give a shout out to the Lowland Reapers on uh, Dentarg EU? Yes, I can. Shout out to Anarchy Bane because he loves cannibalism. Oh, God. That we don't need. We don't need that kind of stuff. Not on this show. We're a wholesome family show. Alex Trachev. Shout out to my guild, Immortal Executors EU. They're on Sulfuron now. Go, guys. You can do it. And I'm sorry I can't join you. Sulfuron's not that hard, but the bugged ads do get annoying. Can we shout out to Jamie, Jamie Sperry because he rules and he's an uber first-person shooter gamer? Hmm. I've got images of Boom Headshot FPS Doug right now in my head. You listen to Blue Please here on WoW Radio. I think Dragon Force is long overdue. Let's face it. It most certainly is. So without further ado, it's prepare for war. Enjoy. Enjoy. 